Hi, my name is Josh Evilsizer, and today I'm going to show you how to use Bard. Are you watching the right video? Well, if you're tired of feeling old and left out, and or you're ready to learn how to best use Bard, Google's generative AI chatbot, then yes. Three questions answered in today's video. What is it? How do you use it? And why should you use it? First, some caveats and redirects. Number one, this is video number three in our Big Four AI Chatbot Explainer series. Please check out the first two overview videos linked below if you haven't already. We're skipping the background info covered in those videos and diving right into BARD. So what is it? BARD is Google's generative AI chatbot that lives on the internet and generates human-like answers to your human-like questions, aka prompts and it's capable of generating an answer to any question. This is because it has essentially learned the internet. Imagine being able to ask the internet any question and always get the most relevant response. This is what Bard does. It's a chatbot and it's also a genius, able to draw from its vast storage of knowledge, i.e. the internet, to answer anything you ask it, to serve as your own personal genius to educate you, collaborate with you, and create for you. In this respect, BARD is no different than ChatGPT. And because I've already explained how ChatGPT can help educate, collaborate, and create, I'm going to skip that topic in this video. If you'd like to learn how BARD can help to educate, collaborate, and create, check out the ChatGPT one-on-one video linked below. What we're covering today is BARD's unique capabilities. What are these unique capabilities, Josh? What's different and oh so powerful about BARD is its real-time access to the internet, which ChatGPT doesn't have, and the Google ecosystem. Google Maps, Flights, Hotels, Drive, Docs and Sheets, Gmail, and YouTube. Access to these apps is 100% exclusive to BARD. BARD also has real-time access to the internet, and the ability to upload and analyze images. All of these extra capabilities, these are what make BARD the Swiss army knife of generative AI chatbots. All right, so I've explained what it is. Next, I'm gonna demo for you how it works, and then I'm gonna show you each of the extensions and, some, and provide some examples for how you might use those. So for maps, flights, hotels, docs and drive, sheets, Gmail, and YouTube. And then finally, we'll cover BARD's real-time access to the internet and how its ability to analyze images is also super powerful, uh, but how all these combined make BARD the Swiss army knife that you need. So let's jump in. Here we go. Here's BARD, and the first question is, well, how does it work? Uh, just like ChatGPT, What is Bard? <laughs> Ask it a question, it provides you an answer, or provide a prompt, and it provides an output. If nothing else, Bard is your faster, much more efficient Google. But unlike ChatGPT, Bard is still connected to the internet and thus can give you better answers or, or answers to questions about current affairs. We'll cover more of that in a minute. Uh, and it also hallucinates, and that's been covered before in the overview videos linked below as well. If you enable the extensions, which is what I continue to talk about, this is where the Swiss Army Knife capability comes in. And that's what we're going to talk about next. All right, so the first extension that I want to talk about is Maps. And the question that I'm going to demo for you here is, please show me, and I've left the at here by itself for a second, and let me move myself up so you, you can see this full question. Please show me the, and then we're going to do maps here. So at maps, and actually I'll just wait. And this is great. It's not working because I'm in my, biz, I'm in my uh, business profile right up here. You have to be in your personal account for this to work. Uh, so great accidental illustration there. And so we'll jump over into my personal account. And what I really want to be in is this account right here. And for whatever reason, now we're in uh, the personal account that I wanted to use because we're connecting to Google Workspace and we want to get the right answers. So here we go. Maps, and we ask it, please show me 
and we type the word or the symbol at, and these extensions should pop up. If you've not enabled them yet, you'll you want to jump up here and enable them there, or just use the at symbol and it's going to give you the opportunity to enable the extension. So there we go. We're using maps, so please show me, and we find maps on here, right here, the maps results for the top three coffee shops in the greater Columbus, Ohio area with at least 100 reviews. So we've asked it a number of questions. Now you're gonna see that it's working because you see Google Maps pop up here, and now it's giving me these three different results. This saved me time in a number of ways. Uh, I didn't have to type first, uh, First, I didn't have to type coffee shop into Google Maps and then scan the entire map and decide, okay, which ones do I want to start looking at for their star reviews? And then which ones are closest to me? And then which ones have the full ratings that I required here, 100 reviews? So it, it, it answered a number of questions immediately. Uh, so hopefully you can see the value there and the immediate response. And what, what uh, I found great is, so here's the coffee shops that it's given me, right? Um, running these results, I actually found out there is a another coffee shop around here that I didn't even know about. In any event, uh, a number of queries with one question and the results are handed to you immediately. Bard's ability to do this super fast is that Swiss Army knife capability that you need. All right, so we're going to jump into our next example. Um, still using maps. And if you've ever driven from New York to Boston or anywhere in the East Coast area, uh, around Christmas time, it's not fun. So we're gonna ask you this question here. If I'm traveling from New York to Boston before Christmas at 11 a.m., what is the most scenic route to avoid, uh, what is the most scenic route that avoids all interstate and toll roads? And sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. So we're just gonna roll the dice on this one and see what happens. You can see Google Maps has been activated. Uh, cool, while I cannot guarantee this is the most scenic route, Found your route that avoids tolls and highways entirely. It takes seven hours and 16 minutes, almost twice as long as if you were to take the interstate um, with no accidents on it. And this takes you from New York to Boston. Pretty cool. Please enjoy your trip. Google Maps is so nice. So there you go. There's how Maps, Bard's integration with Maps can save you a ton of time and research. All right, what's next? Number two, uh, we're going to look at flights. So I'm traveling, myself out of the way there, from Columbus to Los Angeles over the President's Day weekend to visit my buddy Dan. Hey Dan, uh, leaving on 16 February and returning on 19 or 20 February. My return dates are flexible. Please provide the best flight options. Best is defined as only direct flights, flights departing CMH after 8 a.m. because who wants to be at the airport at 6 a.m.? Uh, flights departing LA after 12 p.m. because who wants to get up early on a vacation to come home? And what's the last one here? Least expensive option. So these are our parameters and we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Ask a smart question, get a really great answer. So I've given a lot of parameters and if I were to start searching for this information on flights, I don't know why it did that again, but we'll go ahead and just enter. There we go. If I were to search for this information on flights, first I search the dates that I want to go, and then I start whittling it down by departure times, and then I'm comparing prices, and then I'm looking, oh, but these aren't direct flights. It's just, it could be a 30-minute episode, and with one really well-worded question, uh, Google has provided me the perfect results here. Spirit departing at 5.45 p.m., arriving at 7.41 p.m., perfect. 238 bucks, a little more than I actually paid for this ticket because this is a real trip I'm taking because uh, prices have gone up a little bit. Uh, super helpful. There's the flight. I could click on it, execute, and uh, there you go. What else can we do with flights? I think that's actually it. Uh, next, we're going to talk about hotels. Uh, similar deal. The parameters are the same. Uh, Columbus to Los Angeles over the President's Day weekend, blah, 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 on the same dates. Three-star or higher hotel. So I'm the example here is for a hotel, sorry. Uh, I want a three-star or higher hotel, a uh, Google Maps review of score of 4.0 or greater with at least 100 reviews, proximity to Redondo Beach area because that's where my buddy Dan lives. I want to be close by and the least expensive option. Now, I put Friday, Monday, and Tuesday in here, not dates. Uh, hopefully, that won't confuse it. Every now and then, um, that'll throw it. Uh, but I use the President's Day weekend, so hopefully, it'll, it'll figure it out. And it's going to give us a slew of options. And once those show up, 
then we'll be able to scroll down and pick the hotel we want. And you can see here it's linking with Google Hotels. Um, and you'll notice in here I didn't type the at hotels feature. It just intuitively uh, via context figured out, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna search hotels. So you don't actually have to invoke the extension every time. All right. I don't know why it threw an error there, but we'll go ahead and hit enter one more time. And give it give it just a minute while it thinks. Uh, occasionally, it'll run out of answers uh, or it'll slow down if people have been bugging it a lot, but it's doing well for us this evening, which is great. All right, so you can see here the five different options it's given us. And then if we scroll down, uh, some pictures, and it gives us the proximity. It tells us there are three stars, and you can see they all have 100 reviews or more, what, which is what we were asking for. So there's our five options. Pick the one you want and roll with it. Okay, so there's an example of how hotels work. Now we're gonna look at our fourth example, which is Google Drive. And what I'm gonna ask you to do here is please locate my command philosophy on, I wanna be so specific here that we're using Drive, and summarize and distill it into one short paragraph. So let's see how Bard does for us on this one. Checking out workspace on the right track, accessing documents. I asked for one paragraph, it gave me three sentences. That's great, okay, so good, good, good try. View other drafts, okay, maybe I like this one better. That's a little too short, let me check this one. That's a paragraph, okay, nice job, Google. You can see here it found my command philosophy documents all related to my uh, battalion commander philosophy. So Google, so, didn't used to work this well. Bard is getting much smarter by the day. I am. I continue to be impressed, uh, and it becomes a useful tool in why we're talking about it here, right? So here's my follow-up question. Because Bard can follow along um, in conversation, right? I asked it a question. Now I'm going to ask a follow-up. I don't have to rephrase the entire question over again. So what I'm going to ask Bard to do is to please write a recommendation letter for Captain Ronald Spears. Please weave my command philosophy, so take this information right here and weave it into the recommendation where most appropriate to highlight Captain Spears' strengths. And let's see how it does. You should see here in a minute, it's gonna invoke Google Workspace, which it does, so it's doing the right stuff there. Assessing emails, hmm, not sure why it's doing that. Uh, we'll see what happens though. Very nice. Oh, try but wasn't able to use your workspace data. Okay, your your results may vary. Uh, this has worked before. It's not working for us right this second. We'll give it one more shot with the regenerate, see what happens. See, it's trying to access emails right now. I don't know why it's doing that. This is great, gives you an example of how it can goof. Um, go Here we go though. Excellent, I even signed my name. Look at that, got the rank right. Thank you, Google Bard, nice work. Uh, and what's great about this is now we can take this and either export it to Docs or a draft in Gmail. Super, super handy. Okay, what's next? Uh, we were doing Drive, and now I'm going to give you an example of how we can ask for a, a table of results. So we're going to compare Two different or a bunch of different services. So please build a table that compares the capabilities, strengths, weaknesses, and costs of the five most popular generative AI chatbots. And we're going to hit enter and see what it does for us. Usually this is pretty quick, but you never know. <clears throat> there we go. Beautiful little table. Strengths, weaknesses, Chat GPT, Google Bard, Bing, Jasper, and Perplexity. And what is really cool about this is over here we can export this to sheets and then you'll see over the left hand side here open sheets and then it pops it open and we can play with it there don't care to do that just wanted to show you that capability all right what is next we looked at sheets uh, i think the next thing we're going to look at is gmail and so the question here i've asked it is when did i last order coins so these are challenge coins that i give out as a commander from Boss Coins, how many coins did I order and how much did they cost? So let's give this a whirl. It's gotta check my email to get this answer. I didn't tell it to check email, so let's see contextually, Google Workspace assessing emails. There we go. Boom. All right, you last ordered coins from Boss Coins on November 10th. You ordered 50 coins for $610. Got it right. Again, Bard continues to get really good at this stuff. 
And so my follow-up question for Bard uh, as it relates to Gmail, because we want to create a Gmail, is to compose an email inquiring about the anticipated delivery date. AI becomes helpful when it starts saving you time and when it can start doing all these activities with one question. Oh, now it's confused. <laughs> all right, so I asked it to compose an email about what we're talking here. I wonder if any of the other drafts, nope, didn't work. Okay, so what's the problem? I need a little more information before I can compose an email for you. Who are you sending it to? What did you order? Usually it follows along, so this is strange. Um, in this event, it didn't work. All the other times that I prepared for this video did work. So as you can see, it's imperfect. Um, and so maybe you don't want to use it until it becomes perfect. But in this instance, it didn't work, so we're just going to skip it. But as I've explained, it worked last time. <laughs> so your mileage and my mileage may vary. All right, what's the next thing we're going to look at here? Uh, we did Gmail. And oh, by the way, it would pop over into Gmail. It would open it up for you. And then you just uh, edit the subject line throw in the email of the recipient and hit send. So it tees up the Gmail almost completely for you. All right, the next thing we're, we're gonna demonstrate here is YouTube. So please provide the five most popular YouTube videos that explain how to make pistachio ice cream because who doesn't love pistachio ice cream? All right, you should see it invoke YouTube here in just a second, we're on the right path. Uh, once it does this, we're probably going to get like five results because that's what we asked for. Ask good questions, get good answers. One, two, three, and four. Cool. All right. And so who do we get here? Byron, Glenn, Bruno, Cooking Foodie, and all right. So what I'm going to try to do next, which may or may not work because these are different results than I got last time, uh, but this Bruno Albuzzi gentleman here. Um, let's go ahead and try his video. And what we're going to do is in the YouTube videos follow-up question, I'm going to ask to please, and what was this guy's name again? Bruno Albuzzi in the Bruno Albuzzi video. All right, so I've asked, I'm asking Bard to please create a step-by-step -step list of instructions and a shopping list of ingredients from the information in the Bruno, Bruno Albuzzi video. Forgive me if I'm butchering that name. This is hit and miss, and we are a hit this time. That's great. So ingredients, instructions, tips, there you go, folks. Very, very handy. You can also ask for transcripts, which works. Um, but for the next example, we're leaving YouTube to keep this thing moving. And we're going to jump into how Bard's access, real-time access to the internet is helpful and how it can generate images. So the first thing we're going to do here is, if you've watched any news, uh, you've probably seen the drama with uh, uh, Sam Altman and the OpenAI board. And because Bard has real-time access to the internet and can answer questions about current affairs. When we ask this question, we're, we should get valuable results. The drama surrounding Sam Altman and the OpenAI board unfolded. So commercialization concerns, board resignation and power struggle, resolution, additional notes, et cetera, et cetera. So the answer was provided. I don't know how much clearer I can make it, but I uh, just wanted to highlight Current affairs, got your answers uh, if you're using BARD. All right, so um, what we're going to do next is I'm going to upload an image. So you're out in your garden, and you see this invasive plant, and you're like, what is this thing? You take a picture of it. You upload it to BARD. You ask BARD, what type of plant is this? And BARD is hopefully going to give us the right answer. Japanese hops tree. Very good. Bard is like 10 for 10 on this one and all the pre-demo checks. Uh, Japanese hops tree. All right. Giving us great information on the Japanese hops tree. Now I want to know, how do you get rid of the Japanese hops tree? Because that's why you took the picture in the first place, right? So now you're having a conversation about this thing that's giving you information about. Few ways to get rid of it, uh, each with its own pros and cons. Thank you, Bard. Really appreciate it. So, chemical, biological, 
Uh, the last result when I did this was it provided an eco-friendly way to take care of it. So results are always different, uh, but generally always helpful. Okay, how do you get rid of it? Last thing we're going to do here, you cannot upload files to BARD, but there's a workaround. So I've got this handy spreadsheet here, and this is not the spreadsheet. So give me one second while I jump to the, the correct tab. And here's the spreadsheet. If you can change the spreadsheet or the data into an image, you can upload that into BARD and work it that way. And so that's exactly what we are going to do. Let me jump back into BARD. And here is the image of some brewery data, uh, which the spreadsheet you just saw there for a second. And I'm asking BARD, what are the insights available from this brewery data? And as BARD generates the answer, we will watch, we'll watch it unfold. Uh, what it does is, is that the data provided to it lists number of breweries, and then it also aligns uh, political left or right and kind of the, the analysis therein. So we'll read the, the end summary here. Overall, the data suggests that breweries can have a positive economic impact on the state, but there are a number of other factors that come into play. Um, it didn't talk about the left and right bent and how many, how many breweries were in uh, each state, but I could look at other drafts. And the other drafts, it didn't have enough information. Yeah, so every time your results are going to vary, so ask it multiple questions in different ways and check other drafts because, again, all this stuff is subject to the whims of the, the magical AI wizards. All right, so let's jump into our summary. Why would you use BARD? Anytime you need to educate, collaborate, or create. Remember, we didn't go over that. That's the chat GPT video that I've the previous video before this one. So check out the video linked in the description below. And or when you need a Swiss army knife type solution. And because learning AI, it's important. That's because AI won't replace humans, but humans that use AI will replace those that don't. Be the former, not the latter. Thanks for watching. Don't forget Linked goodness, description down below. Please like, subscribe, share this with someone else that might like it as well or find it useful. Leave questions, I'll leave answers. Now go and be productive.